This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Amidst mass protests against racism and police brutality across the country, at least five men, four black and one Latinx, have been found hanging in public across the United States in recent weeks. All five deaths were initially deemed suicides, but community advocates, scholars and those all too familiar with America's racist history say there's another possibility, lynching. In Palmdale, California, authorities are investigating the death of 24-year-old Robert Fuller, a black man who is found dead, hanged from a tree near the community city hall earlier this month. City officials said he died by suicide, suggesting the cause was due to mental anguish related to the coronavirus pandemic. But Fuller's loved ones believe he was lynched, and the community has been holding protests calling for justice. A week after Fuller was found hanged, Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputy shot and killed his brother, Terran Boone, in what authorities described as a shootout uh, in a desert town near Palmdale. Robert Fuller's death came 10 days after another black man, 38-year-old Malcolm Harsh, was found hanged from a tree about 50 miles away in Victorville, California, May 31st. After calling for further investigation, Malcolm Harsh's family said over the weekend that his death was, in fact, a suicide and that they had reviewed video footage the police provided. Community activists are still asking why it took so long for a thorough investigation into his death. In New York, the New York Police Department's investigating the death of Dominique Alexander, a 27-year-old black man who was found hanged in a Manhattan park two weeks ago. The local medical examiner's office ruled the cause of his death suicide. And in Texas, Congress member Sheila Jackson Lee of Houston is calling for an investigation after two recent hangings. Last week, police found a 17-year-old black boy hanging from a tree in an elementary school playground in Spring, Texas. Earlier that week, a Latinx man was found hanged in Houston. This all comes as a noose was found in the garage stall of Bubba Wallace, the only African-American driver in NASCAR's Elite Cup Series. Wallace recently led a successful campaign to get NASCAR to ban displays of Confederate flags from its events. Well, for more on this topic, we're going to New Durham, North Carolina, to speak with Jacqueline Olive, director of a film called Always in Season. It's a devastating documentary that examines the history of lynchings in the United States through the story of Lennon Lacey, an African-American teenager who was fang found hanged from a swing set in 2014. His mother, Claudia Lacey, believes he was lynched, always in season, premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in 2019. Well, we're going to go to, um, to Jacqueline in a minute. But first, this is the film's trailer, a warning to our audience. This clip contains violent and racist imagery. There's a male subject hanging from a swing. It's a black male subject. I think they hung him up to make it look like a suicide. It looked like a back-in-the-day lynching. His body will be hung in the courthouse square for all to see. All white folks are invited to the party. Lynching was a message crime. They happened in places where the body would be seen. And it's the public nature of lynching that really condemns the white community, because the idea that people didn't know, they did know. As I started researching black males committing suicide in public over the last few years, I became quite concerned that there may be a bigger surreptitious movement at play here. The caption, last night pick before the game. That does not sound like a person that was planning on killing himself. That was the trailer for Always in Season. Jacqueline Olive, we welcome you back to Democracy Now! Under horrible circumstances of one death after another, um, young African-American men hanging from trees in the United States, not 100 or 200 years ago, but in these last weeks. Um, can you talk about the significance of this? Now, again, family members are not saying absolutely they know what happened in each case, um, as was the case in, in the particular hanging you looked at in Always in Season. But they are demanding answers and serious investigations. Can you start off with the Palmdale hanging in California? 
Absolutely. So um, these hangings really come out of a climate um, in the White House in which there is intense vitriol um, and hatred that's being messaged and, and people are, um, are, are being um, energized and activated around those messages. You have militia groups um, that are uh, activated um, in increasing numbers. You have increasing numbers of nuisance incidents, including uh, the one that was found in Oakland, California, um, last week, um, incidents in which people are being threatened, black people are being threatened um, with uh, nooses. Um, and, and so these, as this uh, climate escalates um, and you have these hanging deaths that are um, incredibly alarming, then the first question um, that uh, black folks often have is whether or not um, there was lynching involved. And so um, it is really important that when in, um, local officials come out to investigate these cases, that they frame uh, their um, investigation and they frame their look at the evidence um, in that in, in this history um, uh, with uh, historic lynchings, but also around the racial violence and division that's going on currently. So you have Robert Fuller, who was found hanged outside of City Hall in Palmdale. Um, and then you have Malcolm Harsh, like 60 miles away, found hung in, near the public library in Victorville. Now, That's right. the police departments in both these cases um, uh, immediately closed the investigations and said that it was suicide. It took enormous pressure from activists in Victorville and the family to finally actually see video that the police had that showed, in fact, Malcolm Harsh, it did look like he had taken his own life. That isn't the case for Robert Fuller at this point. We don't know what's happened. Um, and so, and then you have these latest hangings of black and brown people. Wednesday, police found 17-year-old African-American teen hanging from a tree, elementary school playground in Spring, Texas. On Monday, a Latinx man found hanged in Houston. Um, so, and then one here in New York City. So, talk further about how people can know what police assume and what the history is. Sure. Well, typical of this case, and was it was certainly the case uh, with Lynn and Lacey um, that I uh, researched really thoroughly as we filmed, um, is that the police generally show up, and they show up within three days or so, and they've made their conclusion of suicide. Um, what they don't take into account is this history or the family's concerns um, deeply enough that there might have been a lynching and that their family member um, may have met violence. And so uh, it was the case with uh, Lynn and Lacey is that the uh, police within uh, his body was found on um, August 29th, 20 days after the uprising, of, uprising in Ferguson, Missouri, following the murder of Mike Brown, um, August 29th, 2014, um, on a Friday. And uh, the police station was closed over the weekend because there was a holiday. And so they didn't come um, to investigate anything until Tuesday um, when they approached uh, Claudia Lennon's mother. Um, and they didn't look through his phone and they didn't um, look for evidence of anything beyond a suicide but we're really insistent that that was the case. And I found that this is happening again and again. And so families are really calling for there to be a deeper investigation and for, and for justice. Um, and you had mentioned that um, the family member of, um, the family members of Malcolm Harsh have conceded that he committed suicide. One of the interesting things as I was reading, two points that they made, one, one of which is that um, the, the police didn't uh, really investigate his case, even though it was a suicide, it ended up being a suicide. It's important that they show up and that they investigate it thoroughly, and they didn't do that until there was press attention. Um, the other comment um, that was made around the case is that it's a relief that that wasn't a lynching. Um, I think it's equally as, as important that if in these cases of suicide that we look closely um, at that. And, and so um, in my research, uh, as I was researching uh, for Always in Season, I found that there were dozens of cases of black people found hanging publicly since 2000, since 1995. Actually, the, I started looking at the case of Antoine Sedgwick, who was found hanging in Hampton, Virginia, um, hours after the O.J. Simpson verdict. Um, and that case was ruled a suicide. And so there have been dozens of deaths, um, and they're, they're unfortunately, sadly, are not exact numbers. Um, there's a CDC report that I've been looking at that says that there have been 79 unsolved hangings of blacks, and that they've all been males um, uh, in this uh, report. 
um, 79 hangings that are unsolved uh, between 2000 and 2016. And so you have all of these cases um, in the midst of violence we know that's not being acknowledged. Um, uh, if it weren't for the um, outcry, the public outcry around Ahmaud Arbery's um, murder, for example, then um, uh, the McDaniels, Travis and Gregory McDaniel, and the accomplice would not have been held accountable. And so there is a justified outcry, even when the, the result is a suicide, there's a justified outcry um, that comes out of the black community, but by anyone who's paying attention and concerned, that these might be lynchings. Mm. I wanted to ask you about the case of T.T. Gully, a black transgender yes. woman experiencing homelessness who was found hanging uh, in Portland, Oregon. Um, uh, it got a lot of attention recently. And, in fact, um, it got so much attention that a lot of people, including us, thought it had just happened in May of this year. But it was actually a year ago the local medical examiner ruled her death uh, to be a suicide. But her family believes she may have been killed. Um, now it's getting renewed attention as a result of the hangings in California, Texas and New York have gained national attention. So, as you point out, it is not only black men um, in these cases. And talk about the significance of the renewed interest in finding out what happened investigating T.T. Gully's death. Yeah, I think it's important to look at. I also thought that the, the death happened on May 27th of this year, but in fact, it was May 27th, 2019. And part of that reason is because um, the case, the story was dropped by the press um, in 2019 and then picked up with these more recent um, hanging, hanging deaths. And so um, this um, kind of in invisibility that goes with um, these hanging cases in general um, is even greater uh, with uh, trans women, trans people like um, uh, T.T. Gully, um, who, um, for whom the family still believes that, that she didn't commit suicide. Um, and the last uh, news reports I saw on the case were from 2019 until very recently. And so that's just an example of how um, when we look, one is when we look at these cases individually, we're not um, giving the issues um, the attention that, that's merited, the issue about collectively what's going on um, beyond just um, um, dropping in on one case and then out when the police decide um, that they've they've uh, that they've figured out um, or that they've investigated enough is that we it's important for uh, journalists in particular um, to look at uh, at all of it um, comprehensively and and in the context of historic lynching terrorism. Um, and so uh, just as with historic lynchings, um, certainly black men were the primary victims of lynching, um, but women and children were also the victims of lynching. And can you talk about how um, these hangings are often after some kind of uh, horrific event, like the police killing of Michael Brown in 2014, Lennon Lacey, the case you looked at it, always in season, that happened right after that. And then, of course, you have uh, the killing of uh, George Floyd in Minneapolis, the police uprising, and then these subsequent hangings. And they also come after um, touchstones that, that are racialized. And so they, there was an uh, upsurge in noose uh, incidents, threats by noose, um, when uh, President Obama um, campaigned for the very first time. Um, between 2005 and 2008, there was an upsurge um, that was reported by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Um, and so there are these points in which there is um, there is a bit a some momentum by the black community, a bit of progress that's that's met that's met with backlash. Um, and there's also these points in which there's this signaling from leadership um, uh, that um, that violence is okay. And 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 so you have. Out of this, um, all of this violence that that um, we see, and particularly black people and brown people, are really tuned into um, in ways that that the mainstream uh, doesn't necessarily acknowledge. Um, we see it. We understand that there are connections between um, uh, what happens when uh, police um, shoot Oscar Brown in the back, um, when they um, uh, murder George Floyd um, a video, uh, on video. Um, and these hangings, and that there could possibly be a connection. And so um, the outcry, even when there's a suicide, is that um, is out of this sense of urgency um, that uh, that that all of these things, uh, including the noose incidents and all of these ways that that black lives are threatened and minimized 
um, they could very easily result in, in lynching. You also have the case in 2018 of the son of a prominent Ferguson activist, Melissa McKinney's. Her son uh, found hanging behind the family home uh, um, in Ferguson. He was 24 years old. She says he was lynched. So, in all these cases, what are you demanding happens now, Jacqueline? I think that they deserve a full investigation, and that they, and, and given the context of this history, and given um, what what people in communities understand about the racial divisions in these communities, and the families concerned, that we look at them more than three days, um, that they are, uh, and then and then that they are looked at as a whole, because uh, whether or not these are lynchings or whether or not they're suicide, suicides, is there the questions around is there this new trend for black people to hang themselves publicly. There's a there's been historically the stigma um, for black people about um, hanging and certainly hanging publicly and hanging from trees. Um, but if this if these are suicides, then that's information that's really important to understand. In addition to understanding what are the issues around uh, structural racism um, that um, that can uh, increase depression and increase um, anxiety and the suicide rate for black people. Those are all really important to understand. So you have, um, for example, um, um, uh, Malcolm Harsh, uh, who was found hanging, and 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 uh, even though the investigation hasn't um, concluded yet because of toxicology reports, um, you have uh, him found hanging um, at a, a homeless encampment. And so there are issues about. Um, uh, housing instability and insecurity for black people in particular that are important to look at. Jacqueline Oliver, I want to thank you for being with us. And again, thank you for your remarkable film, Always Thanks. in Season, a documentary about the history of lynchings in America. That does it for our show. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us. Stay safe.